Let me tell you a little story. I don't know if this story actually happened, but it's a good story anyway. No, actually, I think it actually worked this way. Okay. Back in the day, right? They they understood that if you had if you had a, um, a a magnet, if you had a coil of wire, and you let current flow through the coil of wire, that that would become a magnet. Yes. Does this make sense? Okay. And 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 the reason is that that this coil, the wires all going in the same way, and around every wire there's a magnetic field, and if they're all going the same way, then basically on the, in the inside of this thing, all of those magnetic fields are all in the same direction, and so they all add up. Okay? Now, this magnet also becomes much, much stronger if I put a piece of metal in there, a piece of iron in there. Okay? And the reason for that, and it's, it's like thousands of times stronger. Air core magnets are very, very weak magnets, Okay, with the metal in there, and you know this because when you made an electromagnet as a kid in those little science books, you wrapped the wire around a nail, didn't you? Yeah, there you go, right? Here's why it works, because in this metal, there's all those little domains. Those, those domains are like little compass needles. And so at the sort of vague suggestion of this external magnetic field, all of those domains line up in that direction. This is called like magnetic permeability. Okay, air doesn't really support magnetic field all that much, right? Metal supports it a lot. Okay, some things are, by the way, I think diamagnetic. That is, that they, they oppose magnetic field. Okay, so this thing, all of these little domains here are going to line up in that direction, and so the net magnetic field is the the magnetic field of the coil plus the magnetic field of the metal there, and it's much much stronger. Yeah. So in essence, your iron is like a the iron acts like a conductor for magnets, right? So when you played with magnets as a kid, remember those little magnet sets? You know that if you put a piece of metal on a magnet, the metal acts like a magnet. Yes, that's because all the domains in that metal were lining up. Does it have to be ferromagnetic? Yeah, it has to be ferromagnetic. Like, I think iron and nickel will do it. And proteins, I believe, are diamagnetic, so they will actually oppose. They'll make the magnetic field less, I believe. What? Yeah, I think certain proteins are diamagnetic. There are things that are diamagnetic. We need Bossy here, because Bossy could uh, explain this. Yeah. It goes the other way. Yeah, yeah, cancels, right? So you can levitate. They've levitated frogs with magnets. It's just diamagnetism. I know. There it is, right? Okay. Oh, by the way, speaking of bossy, I saw him. What? I saw there was a bossy sighting. He came into the room. Okay. Still has facial hair. Okay. And he gave me this, which is terribly unwise. Okay. This is marvelous. Look at this thing. Check it out. It's a Blu-ray laser diode. Okay. It is it is so strong that if I put it on my lip, is it on my lip? I can feel that. It feels warm, right? Your lip is very sensitive. So it actually gets warm. I'm pretty sure that this would damage your vision, right? So this is kind of a dangerous thing. Don't play with it. Um, <laughs> If you ramp up the voltage, I believe you can just overpower these, like, like power them a little higher, right? And you can light matches with it. There was a kid at Tiger a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, I don't have that on this, but yeah, there we have it. Do I have a license for it? No, I don't. Now, let's go back to the magnet story, okay? This is now... This is now going to be, if I send a current through this, a strong magnet. I can pick things up with it, yes? In fact, let's do this. Let's send a current through this, okay? And let's pick something up. Can I pick something up with it? Is that becoming a magnet? There we go. Ooh, it's kind of a strong magnet. There we go. I can't quite pick up the stapler. More current. More current. There we go. Little applause, please. Can I pick up the stapler? Yes, and it's getting very warm, so I must turn the current down. Whoops, so bad for a stapler to do that. Oh dear. Okay, there we have it. Now, what they did then, this is the story, is that they knew that an electric current made a magnetic field, so the possibility exists that a magnetic field can make an electric current. Yes? So, and they also knew that they had to sort of like overlap them. And so here is a coil of wire. This is connected to this galvanometer. Now, if you ever forget that it's a galvanometer, that's why that big G is there. Okay? That stands for galvanometer. 
Okay. Turns out if there's a slideshow going on in the background, right? If people pay attention to the slideshow. It's much more exciting than the teacher, right? Okay. So this galvanometer well, is very sensitive. It's going to detect current. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this coil inside this coil, and this is going to make a magnetic field inside that coil. And when I make a magnetic field there, current should flow in the external wire. Yes? Are we ready for this? Okay. So here we go. I'm all ready to start my experiment. And okay, so here we go. And I'm going to turn it up to uh, first one amp. Okay, let me look at it. Nothing. Needle hasn't moved. Okay, let's turn it up to two amps. Nothing. Uh, let's turn it up to three amps. Now let's go six amps? No. Let's see. Uh, I can't decide what current to put it at. I'll put it at, put it at four amps. Nothing. Dang it. I can never decide. Which one should I put it at? Jeez. Okay, I'm done for the day. I'm going away. I'm coming in. Okay. Uh, still nothing. Right? Of course, when is it? When is it? When, is, when are you getting a current? Increasing or decreasing. When it is in general changing is when we get the current. If I sit here like this, yeah? Right? I get a current. In fact, watch this. This is turning it off. This is turning it on. Notice that they deflect different directions, yes? Off, off, on, yeah? Okay, so, so that's sort of an interesting thing. Obviously, there's some sort of rule that has to determine whether it's one way or the other way, right? And that, we have to learn that today. And then we also need to learn how to calculate what that voltage is, okay? How about a little applause for this guy? Okay. Very nice. Okay, so, so many things to learn. The first concept that we have to learn uh, is the concept of magnetic flux, okay? Let's go wide here. Ooh, look at that. So concept zero is magnetic flux. And this symbol is, what is that symbol? Is that a phi? I don't know, okay? Magnetic flux is B times A times the cosine of the angle, okay? Shh, guys, can we be quiet, please? Okay, so here is some area like this, and there's, there's several weird things, right? This guy here is our flux. It's all back to the future fans can have you know, a lot of fun with this, right? This is the flux in Weber's, right? So, so literally, I believe a, a Tesla is is uh, is like a Weber per square meter or something like that, right? Which is kind of an inter interesting thing. Okay, um, not funny. Do you guys do you guys ever have Mr. Weber as a sub? Oh yeah. Yeah. Ah, hey, <laughs> that guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we now we recognize him, right? And it's hard to picture more than one of those per square meter, right? But yet, you know, thousands apparently, according to to, to uh, Mr. Bossy. Right. And then this is our magnetic field or our bamagnetic field. In Teslas, right? And then this is our area in square meters. And then the angle here is the angle between the area and the magnetic field. And this is a very strange thing because in physics land and in math land, area is represented as a vector that is perpendicular to the surface. Isn't that a weird thing? In fact, that perpendicular is not correct. Anyway, that's a weird thing, isn't it? Okay. So if I've got a, a surface, why do they do that? Because it works. It's so slick mathematically, right? So if I've got a surface here, let's suppose I've got a magnetic field that is out of the page. It's always out of the page, right? Okay. I've got a magnetic field that's out of the page. This loop here is my area. This vector represents the area. So right now, the angle between out of the page and this area, right? This, this thing goes along with that area, right? If you can imagine that, right? What's the angle right now? Zero. Zero, because this magnetic field is out of the page. This arrow is also out of the page, yeah? Now the angle is 90. Cosine of 90 is? Zero, right? 
Okay, so 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 none of the we have zero flux right now, and now it is the angle is one eighty. 